two words to describe Talithia Williams are gifted and a comedian. Talithia's unique giftings and talents inspires me and intrigues me to do what God has called me to do. And she's a comedian. She is funny. So get ready to laugh. You're going to love this conversation. Here we go. We have the one and only Talethia Williams here. Yes. I'm so thankful you're here. You have quite the unique bio. So you're a wife and a mother. You're a math professor, a science communicator, and a TV personality. I'm almost 100% sure that there's nobody else <laughs> out there that has that list to their name. So yeah. how? How do you do it all? And how did you like come to be doing all of those things together? Yeah, yeah. Um, first, Alita, thank you so much for having me on the yeah. show. Um, and I don't know that I do all of those things well, you know, the, the, the longer <laughs> the list gets, the more things sort of get, um, you know, get, get have done. But um, I think a lot of it just had to do with growing up in an environment where I was just encouraged to do any and everything. And I was wow. like, I want to try this and do this and do this. Um, having a family that was really supportive, having a, a spouse that's very supportive and who's just encouraged me to not um, limit myself yeah. to just this one definition, you know? Yeah. And like, yeah, you can be a mom and a wife and you can be on TV and you can write a book and you can do all this other stuff. Um, so yeah, it's it's part of it is having that support system that I think really encourages me yeah. to do all these roles. I remember when I first met my now husband, GJ. So when I, one of the very first times I ever met him, he asked me the question. He said, without any limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. what would you like to do with your life? And that question changed everything for me when I didn't have to, well, I can't do this because of that. I can't mm, do this. I can't mm. do that because of my lack of education, because yeah. I'm a single mom, because at the time, because I, I, I didn't think about all the reasons why I couldn't right. do things. Right, right. He just said, what would you do? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden the, the veil was lifted mm -hmm. off of the, the, it was peeled back of the things that I could do if mm. nothing held me back. Mm -hmm. So it sounds mm -hmm. like you had the right people in place to really encourage you and still do. Absolutely. And to have people who um, push you to achieve that dream that feels almost unattainable mm -hmm. um, and speaks that life and that affirmation into you. Uh -huh. You know, I try to pass that on to my boys as well. I think we all tell our kids, you can be anything, you can do anything. Um, but supporting that, right? And encouraging right. them when they make mistakes and when they fall down and say, that's all right. You know, how do we, how do we help make the situation better? Um, and so, you know, it's funny when I think about that now, like, you know, if I had unlimited resources and, and time, what would I do? Um, I don't even know yeah. because I, I feel like, Part of this journey has taught me that God has taken me places that I never would have chosen to go. And yes, he has put me in these situations that. where it's like, oh, if you'd have asked me if I would have been doing that five years ago, I would have been like, there's no way. And if it came up, I'd decline, you know. And so <laughs> uh, to look back and see like, oh, God, like you put a path together yeah. that had you asked my opinion, I would have yeah not well and know. my life is nothing like what i thought it was going to be when i was a young person if i had to say what i thought my life was going to be none this of it wouldn't be none it. of this would have yeah. been included yeah yeah <laughs> and i mean personally professionally just my life is completely different yeah than what i thought it was going to be that's right and it's so much better it is yeah. that's the thing that i always have to like come back to is when i live in god's will when i live in god's will all of a sudden things happen that I could have never imagined mm -hmm. because his ways mm -hmm. are higher. His thoughts are higher. They aren't like our thoughts, yeah. right? That's what yeah. scripture tells us and promises us that. And it's always more and better because he's a God of abundance. That's right. The things that That's we right. can't even think of, he provides mm -hmm. in different ways. Right? Even when we're not in his will. 
Like, I love that he, like, gently sort of nudges us, like, no, 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 over here, over here. Okay, fine, you want to do this thing. Go ahead, do it. It's going to delay you three years. It's like, God, I'm sorry, you were right. I should have done that thing you said, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I laugh because I've done that a lot in my life. I'm yeah. like, yeah. just stay on track. He's a god of patience, though. You yeah. Know? So that helps. Well, I'm, Alita's not that much about patience. <laughs> That's the problem. Right, right. <laughs> I won it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. That's the one thing I feel like God has really worked on me. Yeah. Patience. Yeah. Love is, what's the first word? Listen. Patience. That's right. That's so, right. I'm really. And then it's kind, too. So you got to be patient and be nice about it. Like, it's oh. just, right? You, did you have to bring that one up? Mm. <laughs> I'm just saying. I can be patient, but I'm going to be, like, patient with an attitude. Like, I told you to hurry up. Why is this taking so long? It's like patient and kindness. Don't forget Girl. that part. Like, yes. Dang it. Okay. So if you had to create a title for the story of your oh life. Oh my goodness. Yes. What would it be? It would be the go-go girl. So my great grandmother would say, would call me that when I was so like good. eight, nine, ten years old. And she'd be like, here comes the go-go girl. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, am I just running around? And she, she would look at me and say like, you're going to be on the move. You're always on the go and I see it in you. And not as a kid, I wasn't, you know, I was just my regular personality, but something she saw in me, she'd be like, that's the go-go girl. Wow. And my mom reminds me of that. She's like, here you go, jetting off here, doing this thing. Like Coralie was right. You're the go-go girl. You're always on the go and not in a bad way. Just like Mm -hmm. there's always this, you know, God is calling you into all these spaces and you're on the move and you're doing it. That's just the way you are, not in a negative way. Yeah. But that's just your personality. That's yeah. your character. Yeah. yeah. It's good. At Women of Faith, we not only care about your spiritual health, we care about your physical health too. In fact, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and that we are to be obedient to Him by taking care of the body God gave us. Our new sponsor, Faithfully Fit and Free, shares this belief. And they're driven by a passion for helping people achieve a healthy body, a healthy spirit, and a healthy mind. You can visit faithfullyfitandfree.com to discover products that give you more energy and support your immunity, along with superfoods, personal care, and more. I personally love their mission and their products because I feel incredible taking them. And I know you'll love them too. Plus, when you place your first SmartShip order, you'll receive a free devotional. Check out faithfullyfitandfree.com, where the focus is on a healthy body, a healthy spirit, and a healthy mind. When life gets hard, it helps to know you're not alone. If you or someone you care about is battling anxiety or depression or loneliness, Our comprehensive collection of classes and resources cover more than 100 topics like these. All of our classes are based on biblical truth, giving you hope beyond what the world has to offer. Sign up to watch the Women of Faith collection of classes at Liftable TV and start moving toward the freedom you crave. We envision a world transformed by women living victoriously with Him. We prepare our kids to be able to speak up what they for what they believe in. God wants to provide for us all the wisdom and the knowledge that we need. He wants you to have a group of friends. He wants you to feel like you belong. He wants you to be in community because we're made for a relationship. Watch over 80 diverse Christian programs, including the Women of Faith show and classes on Liftable. So take me back to young Talithia. Mm. How did you come to have a relationship with Jesus? Yeah, I grew up in the church in Georgia, in the Southern Baptist um, Black Church. And so it was like an extension of family. Um, It was also a place that we went to probably two or three times a week. Like, I felt like we were raised at home and the church. So we just sort of grew up in the church um, because we were there for youth night and choir rehearsal and, you know, uh, all services on Sunday. Like, we we just never left. Um, but that also meant that I was really steeped in, you know, learning at an early age about Jesus and his love and, um, being in community with other believers. So I was seven years old when I accepted Christ as my personal savior and got baptized. And, you know, at the time, um, 
I believed in Jesus, but I, you know, my relationship was still budding, right? You know, I didn't know what it meant to right. pray out to him and God help me on my spelling test tomorrow. You know, like I, it was just like, all right, I believe. And, right. you know, life just keeps going. Um, it wasn't until I got to high school that I really started to grow that relationship a lot more. I remember when I was applying to college and um, my family didn't have any money to, they were like, you know, how are you going to pay for school? I'm like, I don't know. But in the Bible, it says something about, you know, cattle on a thousand hills. So it seems like God ought to be able to do something, right? Like he owns all this stuff. You know, and like that was my thinking. And so I was just like, God, I need money. Here's where I want to go to school. We don't have any money. And you've got our everything. So please, please, please. Like, you know, um, just the basic prayer 101, right? How we start out, like, give me, give me, give me. Um, and that was sort of, how it started yeah. and um and but god stepped into that and said okay like if this mm-hmm. is gonna this is gonna help draw you closer to me and so i got a scholarship to go to wow. school and i was like oh this thing works you know uh, this whole prayer thing this relationship <laughs> thing and it was really i think god sort of like all right but you, you know it's more than just right. i'm not just your magic genie that you come to for yeah. what you think you need and you really started having a relationship with him after that, do you feel like? I think it, I think I started having more of a dialogue with mm. him after that. Yeah. Tell me more about that. I think before it was, um, it was sort of like uh, praying, but then not being quiet enough to listen in return. Mm. And, and I think even sometimes today I get distracted by like, okay, I've done the devotional and I've had prayer time and yeah. off to make breakfast, off to get the kids. Right. Instead of like, oh, wait, I, I need to give God time to respond or to talk to me. Mm-hmm. And I think that really started once I got in college and realized it's not a one-way communication. Yeah. It's not just, here's my list for today, cover me, bless my family, help me get good grades, mm-hmm. and I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. It's really, you know, what am I hearing in return? What is God telling me? Yeah. Um, how is God correcting me and yeah. being open and receptive to that? Yeah. Uh, and then you headed down this mathematician lane tell me about that and how does being a christ follower like intersect or parallel with that Mm. how does that go together for you yeah so you know i was not necessarily mathematically gifted like it was something that i really had to work hard at you know when people here like oh you got a phd oh my gosh you do math i hate math and i'm like oh and like it wasn't necessarily my favorite subject either um, it was something that I did okay in, and I had mentors who really encouraged me to go to grad school and continue. Uh, there was, there are so few, and were so few at the time, black women mathematicians that it was hard to find examples. So sometimes I felt like I was in a space where I didn't belong, mm. you know, because I didn't see a lot of women, I didn't see a lot of people of color, and I think sometimes as believers we can get in spaces where we feel like, oh, this feels like I don't belong in this space. Yeah. Um, But in many ways, like the beauty of mathematics just reveals God's nature, right? God is a mathematician, you know? And so I love to just discover um, all these interesting facts about how he, you know, created the world and how these things flow together Mm -hmm. and just the details behind it. um, Because it just illuminates that there's this almighty creator that was very intentional. Yeah, that's so good. And so you became a mathematician, you're a professor at Harvey Mudd and tell me about how do you incorporate Jesus into being a professor? What yeah. does that look like? Yeah, 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 yeah. So being a professor at a um at a you know an institution that's sec- secular um as a professor of faith, you know, really means that I have to build community with other professors of faith because in some ways um you know, you're, I'm constantly interacting with people from all types of backgrounds and beliefs and traditions and loving on them, right? And just, you know, letting them see who I am authentically and embracing who they are, yeah. you know, uh, in the midst of their pain and suffering and, you know, joys and hurts. Um, but really sort of being like the hands and feet of Jesus right. in this environment um, and I think that's what God calls us to do, you yeah. know, to really bring our whole selves into did, where we are. Did you struggle with, okay, I'm at this secular mm. university. Yeah. 
Um, did you struggle with that? How did you navigate feeling comfortable? Um, and how do you share your faith Yeah, when appropriate? Yeah. You know, it's funny because um, when I was, you know, praying about like the next step to take and, and whether or not to take this position and um, and it was California, this was at the height of the housing market in 2008. And so it was just like all these reasons not to move all the way out there. We, you know, can't afford to live there. And I was like, well, God, like, why not just put me in this like safe, you know, like just secure little bubble, you know, like I could have been, you know, it's funny. We were trying to get to Dallas. My husband's from Dallas. I was like, oh, I could have been in Dallas. Uh And and God's like, I don't need you in Dallas. I don't, I don't need you at these other places. Like Mm -hmm. I need you right here. Right. And that was, I was like, oh, okay. You know, I've got people in Dallas. I've got folks at these other Mm -hmm. Christian colleges and universities. Those students don't need you. Yeah. Like these students need you. Um, And they, in some ways, need to see me through you. Right. right? And how you love them. Not necessarily how you walk them down the Romans road, you know, but how you show me to them on a daily basis. So, um, you know, rarely can I just sort of like, evangelize my students you know if you come to office hours and you're like I've got a question about homework I'm like great and by the way do you know that Jesus loves you you know do you have a relationship right do you also have for extra credit if you were to get baptized right now you know um but often I get students because I think I'm very like transparent and open and just loving and they'll come and they'll share things that they struggle with Mm -hmm. and they'll say well Prof Williams like how do you deal with this and so then that's a window, right? Because once you ask me what I do, then I'm going to just yep. share what I do. Like, well, you know, here's what I do as yeah. a believer. Here's, you know, um, and you can do whatever you want. But since you asked me, I'm going to just share. And so those are ways that I think God has used those moments to um, allow me to to talk with students and just yeah. share um, more about me fully, like who I am as, a, yeah. as more than just like their math professor. Yeah. yeah. I think a lot of times people... Um, think that people in ministry are the ones that are doing the work for the Lord. Yeah. But in reality, the Lord has called All everyone That's right. in the marketplace, That's right. everyone in the world, everyone in their own industry to be the hands and feet of Jesus, Yeah. to yeah. be the light in a yeah. dark world, to share the love of Jesus, to share what it is that we're doing. I think that's great. Like, if you're going to ask me how I do it, I love how you said that. If you're going to ask me how I do it, I'm going to I'm going to tell, tell you. Yeah. And I think that's being bold, have a spirit of boldness. That's one mm-hmm. of the things I feel like God has really been speaking to me lately of have a spirit of boldness. Yeah. Have the God confidence. Stand Ooh, on like that God confidence. Yeah. Stand like on that. that solid foundation mm. and unapologetically. Yeah. I've heard that word yeah. a lot lately. Actually, the the company that um, produces this this show for us, they say unapologetically Christian. Mm-hmm. We don't mm-hmm. have to apologize mm-hmm. for it or hide it. Yeah. Um, it's just out there. That spirit of boldness. Yeah. And I think I see that in you and your sharing. And you you uh, communicate with Christian um, organizations as well. So yeah. you're not yeah. only a math profession, professor, you're a science communicator so you have many people who ask you to do that and then you also communicate in the christian world as well again going back to like i don't think there's very many people with this bio (laughs) (laughs) i think it's so great for people to see believers in different spaces yes because sometimes we think um, of believers a certain way and non-believers a certain way and especially when you think about science and, you know, how the world was created, you sort of in your mind, you're like, okay, here's what Christians believe and here's what everybody else believes. Yeah. And so to sort of walk in those two spaces as a believer yeah. um, makes for really rich conversations around, you know, um, our spirituality and what we believe, but also what it means to be a Christian in these different spaces. Yeah. yeah. One of the things I know that you have talked about is your... I don't know if I want to say struggle. You can correct mm-hmm. me with a better word. Uh, your struggle with your identity. Tell me about that. Oh, yeah. I think, you know, um, because I wear so many different hats, sometimes it's 
hard to do any of them well, right? Like being a jack of all trades, a master of none. And um, and also balancing what what you allow people to see, mm. right? Because now that social media is pervasive and, you know, everyone, I get to see what everyone had for breakfast and what their outfit is for the day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, for someone who's been in the public eye, people want to see that, right? And how much of it do you put out there? Because as soon as you sort of um, put it out for consumption, you also put it out for attack. And so I've always wanted to be really protective of, you know, my family, but also just not sure like, God, what are you, what do you want me to share? And then how do I be comfortable? How am I comfortable letting people see that fully? Um, and I don't think I, I don't I don't think I have a solution for it yet. I'm yeah. still sort of struggling with what parts of my identity do yeah. I want to be super public and what right. parts do I sort of just want to hold on to for a little bit to figure out what to show and what, mm-hmm. you know, because the last thing I want to do is to offend. But I also want to be bold. Yeah. Right? And so how do you walk that line knowing that a lot of people are looking at you? to Talithia talk about her role in a secular university or in these spaces that it isn't necessarily Christian ministry, but it's in the world, made me think about, it's not about your position, it's about your positioning. Think about it for yourself. Where have you been positioned? Where is God positioning you in your life? You may not be in ministry. You may not work for a church, but you can be the hands and feet of Jesus. Just continue to ask yourself, I just encourage you, how can you be the hands and feet of Jesus? How can you encourage? How can you help people understand who they are in Christ? It's not about the position. It's about the positioning. Do you feel like you want to be known as like the Christian math professor? I... I don't know. Like, I'm not against it, you know. Um, I I think about it in terms of, like, God, how do you want to use me to reach people? Uh And being open to that. Because sometimes I'm in spaces that are overwhelming for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, God, what am I doing here? This is out of my wheelhouse. I can't believe you got me in front of these people. And and he's like, it's for my glory. It's not even about you, Talithia. I'm like, yeah. oh, right, my bad. You know, <laughs> you're right. Um, and so when I think of it that way, you know, I think, well, God, whatever helps for people to see you and me, like it's not about, it's not about me. You right. Know, it, it's about him. And so, um, so for some audiences, knowing that I'm a believer draws them closer yes and you know if you read my bios like I, I i stick it in there like oh let me know how do i uh <laughs> sort of put this in so that the, the believers will know and if you're not you're not gonna yes. be like what wait a minute um there's some audiences where knowing that i'm a christian is a turnoff yeah and they may not want me to come speak because mm-hmm. they're like oh like she's gonna be one of those and so in some in some ways not knowing for some groups is is opening the door right for god to be visible right. in a way that they wouldn't have had they known yeah and so that's why i'm sort of i think that's part of the identity yes you know tug of war yeah. is once you say like this is who i am right people are like well those christians they were oppressive and they blah yeah. blah blah you know yeah um i'm really yeah. enjoying this conversation even as you are just navigating con- like literally now still navigating this because I feel like most people are navigating this right now. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so let's think about like, what advice can we give people? Like as we navigate, what is our, we know our identity is in Christ. We are a daughter of the King. We know that that's who we are. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. as we navigate that, like what would you give as a piece of advice of saying, as you are um, thinking through this, what is a lens that maybe we can look through? I, you know, our church has the, the term, uses the term oikos. Who's, who's in your oikos? Who's in your your sphere of eight to 10 people who are close to you mm. who are non-believers? Mm. And 
most everything we do is from the perspective of, hey, we're doing this event. Think about your Oikos. Make sure you invite your Oikos to this. This is a great Oikos event. So it's constantly thinking about how I reach people who don't know Christ instead of like, let's just huddle together. It's like, no, we got to like play the game. We got to fight to win. And so I often um, think about like, who can I touch and who can I sort of um, uh, through the work that I do? Yeah. Who's going to be most uh, influenced by this? Who's in my oikos that God really wants me to reach? Yeah. And I, I like that because it makes it feel more attainable and doable. That's right. Than I'm going to go impact the entire world right. and I'm going to evangelize gonna and bring everybody to and Jesus. Reach millions. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm just going to eight to 10, eight to 10. And that's everyday living. Every day. That's, you know, what we're called to do is yeah. just reach out to the people. That are around us. Because if we all reach out to the people that are around us, guess We've what? All, we got it. Everybody everywhere. Right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I really like that piece of advice. I think that's really strong. And really that brings us to life leadership. Mm -hmm. So I define life leadership as leading those around you. Um, and that's just in everyday life. But it really starts with leading yourself well. You lead yourself well. And so leading yourself well so that you can lead those in your home, in your mm -hmm. church, in your community. It's not necessarily corporate leadership. Right. It's really about affecting those that are closest around yeah. you. Yeah. To, and ultimately, it's about leading yourself well so that you can bring them all to Jesus. That's right. And that's right. to me, that's what you're really talking about is mm -hmm. everyday life. How do you continue to reach out to people that are surrounding you and have a positive impact on them, not for your own gain, not for my own gain, yeah. but really for the gain of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Because it's funny, you know, when people, when you interact with people, even like maybe my beautician or the person who's behind you at the grocery store, you know, just taking the time to to chat with them yes. and smile at them. And people are like, well, what is it? There's something about you. And right, that's created a space yes. for well, Let me tell you what it is. <laughs> Jesus, you know. There's uh, something different about there's you. There's something different, yeah. right? And I don't think we use those opportunities. Yeah. You know? Um, you were telling me that when you travel in the airport, oh, yeah. tell me about that. Oh, no, go ahead. Wait, uh, set it up. When I travel. <laughs> when you travel. Like, I do a lot of stuff when I travel. but <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of stuff. Oh, oh, the Avril's Club. That's not oh, going to sound wait. snooty. One more it? thing we want to add to the bio <laughs> is comedian. <laughs> you can make a joke out of anything. It's so good. <laughs> no way. <laughs> that out. Oh, my gosh. Yes, when I travel. Okay. Um, you travel a lot. I travel a lot. Okay. I travel a lot. And when I used to travel you know i'd be like dressed nicely i'm going to speak and then i'd be in the airport on the floor with my charger plugged into a wall behind a term i mean it was just <laughs> and and i you know my husband's like honey why don't you get a membership to you know one of the to the admiral's club and i'm yeah. like okay you know and so i joined and, and so now i get to go and like yeah. sit and eat and yes. you know view and plug in um, but every time I go, I try to invite someone. So I'll go to my gate and I look around and I try to find someone and say, hey, I can bring a guest. Do you want to come with me? And most people like love the opportunity. Yeah. Um, but just yesterday on my way here, I see this young lady <laughs> like me. I saw myself in her. She's on yep. the floor, plugged into yep. a wall, you know, just stuff all over the floor. And I'm like, hi, do you want to come with me to the Apple Club? <laughs> And she's just like, uh, I'm okay. I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I can take a guess. And you can get off the floor and come yeah. to the beauty of it. Yeah. And she was just like, this woman's crazy. <laughs> Please. She's like, no, I'm fine right here. Yeah. Um, but doesn't, I feel like God does the same thing to us. Yeah, he does. He's and like, let me invite you out of this yes. space. Oh my gosh. Take you to the, there's free food. There's free drinks. Yes. There's comfort. And you're sitting here in the corner next to the elevator on the floor. You have a spiritual gift of generosity <sighs> and you just want to bring somebody with you. I just you. want to bring somebody with me. I think that's so cool. Like when you told me that, I'm like, just inviting strangers to... Random. Yeah. Random. So good. Yeah. That is life leadership though yeah. too. Like yeah. it's just everyday life. Yeah. Let me bring you along. This one young lady. Let me lift you up. She was like, you don't understand how you have made my day. Like mm. she was just feeling depressed and 
like wanting to hear from God. And she was like, and you came along and I'm like bawling on the inside. I'm just like, I just saw you and it was like, <laughs> you, hey, you know. Yeah. And she's just like, oh, so good. it was just, I'm like tearing up just yeah. thinking about it. And I was like, okay, God, all right, I'm going to listen. I'm going to yeah. be and bold. That's, that's God working oh, through yeah. you in oh, ways yeah. that you, you don't know who to pick. You just, I literally, I'm just God, like, which one, which person? Yeah. And some so days good. I don't want to do it if I'm honest. Yeah. Some days I'm like, God, I really just want to go sit down. Yeah. This looks crazy. I don't know these people. I'm right. just like, you know, folks are looking like, why are you walking up to this random person yeah. sitting here? And I'm like, hi, yeah. would you? And God's like, I don't care if it makes you uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, I want you to. A lot of times I ask people, ask us, what would be one piece of advice that you would give someone? Mm. Um, and I feel like you just gave it. Mm. Like that's, you're actually living it out. That is your advice. Be generous with people. Be the yeah. hands and feet of Jesus. Um, you have the perfect example of how to live out a life in the marketplace, in the world, mm. in mm-hmm. the airport. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just do the, the lounge. Thing, <laughs> do the things that God would do for you. Right. So right. good. Yeah. If Jesus were walking around today, like how would he interact with you? Yeah. He wouldn't be like, oh, come on. Oh, you're taking so long, right? He'd be excited to engage and get to know us and that's talk a good to us, challenge you know? right it's a good challenge we talked about patience that's challenging mm-hmm. um yeah jesus is not looking at the clock waiting on He's us not. come on right come on and we want to do that we want to rush 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 i heard yeah. somebody i was talking with um a person and he said i don't think jesus ever ran in the bible does it say mm-hmm. anywhere that jesus mm-hmm. ran Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure there was a reason yeah. why that was never included. He was unhurried. He was unhurried. He would yeah. just linger. That's I'm right. like, this is good. I like that. Jesus lingered. I don't. I, I think in one of the translations it actually says Jesus lingered. Mm-hmm. He just mm-hmm. chilled out. Mm-hmm. Because that's where transformation takes place. That's where that's change right. takes place. That's where love takes place. That's where life takes place. Life. When we think about it. It's not yeah. these big moments. It's in the lingering. It's yeah. in... The small moments. Yeah. yeah. Last question. Uh-oh. Oh, I might have two questions. Okay. Okay. I, I like to sneak okay. one time. extra in. Okay. Truth bomb time Ooh. from Talithia Williams. Ooh. Like a 30, 60 second takeaway that maybe people would remember that you said. Yeah. My great grandmother would always say this. <laughs> um, convince a fool against his will. He'll have the same opinion still. Save your breath to cool your soup. And I remember she'd say it, and I'd be like, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. And then the older I got, I, I knew the older I got, I realized it would be when she was, like, telling me to do something differently or not to do something. And I'm like, no, nope, I'm going to just keep going. You know, and I, I'd learn the hard way. And she'd be like, convince a fool, convince a fool, you know. Um, but it really sat with me. Wow. And, you know, and then, you know, my mom would say it. And I'd be like, Mom, what are you doing? I'm just saving my breath to cool my soup. That's all. Just saving my breath. Wow, you know, I think we could all, that's listen, a good piece of wisdom. Save your breath. Yeah. Um, especially because, you know, we're, we're online, you can just sort of spurt out hatred and spew whatever, you know, when you look at comments. For, and, and I'm like, Talithi, just save your breath. Yeah. Like, this isn't the time to try to convince people. Like, live a life wow. that shows what you believe. Yeah. And so good. give people space to come along eventually. One last piece of advice. Yeah that you'd like to share with our viewers today? Um, I think for me, it's about staying hopeful in the midst of what's happening around us. I Mm -hmm. think it's easily, it's easy to become frustrated or depressed about where things are in society, but, um, you know, we win at the end, right? (laughs) If you skip ahead, (laughs) we win, you know? And so... Like, just sort of really resting in that hope and not becoming so fixated on what's happening in this moment, but really enjoying these moments. And And our hope hope. is not found in this world. That's right. Our hope is found in Jesus Christ alone. And it's um, when we have that eternal perspective, Mm -hmm. I love that that's your Mm -hmm. piece of advice. Like, Mm -hmm. that's when you leave here, our hope is found in Jesus. So good. Yeah. And making sure that our oikos and our folks close to us mm. know that. Like, that's the takeaway. Yeah. Yeah, I want you to do well in school. And I want you to be great people. But I really need you to have a great, strong relationship and hope in Jesus. Cause because, that's, yeah. That's what lives forever, you know. Yeah. 
Uh, I just so strongly agree with that. There's so many things that we like to stand on. We like to put our stake down and say, it has to be this way. Yeah. But does it? Yeah. Does it actually have to be that way? Because does that actually matter in eternal? Right. In eternity? Yeah. Our eternal life. Did yeah. that thing actually matter? I was um, talking with my husband about just different scenarios, different things that we go and do. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know what's interesting is, Anything that you actually go and do, whether it's your work or a hobby or spending time with family, you know, the only thing that actually matters is your relationship with those people so that you can have an impact on them for Jesus for their eternity. Yeah. At the end of the day, it didn't matter what the food was that was placed mm-hmm. in front of you. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter what the hobby was. It What matters is this level of connection mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that you can connect with those people so that you can have an impact on them for Jesus, for eternity. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, none of that other stuff actually even mattered. That's right. So crazy, isn't That's it? That's right. That's right. Girl, I'm cheering you wildly. Thank you. I love everything that you're doing. Thank you for being such an encouragement for um, such a special person today. I feel like you are speaking something specific into the world in a beautiful way. I love it. It's been so fun. This show was brought to you in part by Faithfully Fit and Free, ICCI, and OneShare. To learn more, go to womenoffaith.com.